Chapter Twelve of Peggy Raymond's School Days, or Old Girls and New, by Harriet Lummis Smith. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter Twelve, Getting Even. It was traditional in the girls' high school that the sophomore class should entertain the seniors during the spring months. The character of entertainment varied from year to year, though an excursion on the bay was a favorite form of hospitality. But the president of the present sophomore class was ambitious to discover something entirely new and original, something that should far surpass anything that previous classes had attempted. The committee she had appointed to consider the important question was a large one, the sophomore president holding with solomon that in a multitude of counsellors there is safety and when genevieve alden came to school the morning following the class meeting she was immediately enlightened as to the work of the committee and informed that she was to share in its deliberations genevieve hesitated at the opening of school she would have declined the honor flatly but as a matter of fact she was growing rather tired of the pose of dignified aloofness superiority was proving lonely had she been able to discover a few kindred spirits, their companionship would have sustained her, but the girls who attracted her most, the friendly Terrace Quartet, were so thoroughly democratic in their attitude that Genevieve had received no sympathy from that quarter. She was beginning to realize that the girls whom she scorned were at least enjoying themselves, while she, on her self-erected pedestal, was forlorn and left out of things. Genevieve was forced to wonder if it would not pay to compromise. She listened with an air of indifference while the chairman of the committee explained its object. Oh, I don't know as I care to have anything to do with it. I'm not particularly interested in class affairs. You ought to be, said the chairman. Encouraged by the fact that Genevieve had not refused, she dilated on the advantages to the class in possessing a girl of Genevieve's qualifications. Genevieve listened with growing approbation. The chairman seemed to her a very sensible girl, quite deserving her assistance. I should be in favor of a banquet at a hotel or something of that kind, remarked Genevieve languidly. Excursions seem so dreadfully ordinary. Addie Dwight's entrance into the cloakroom distracted the chairman's attention just at that point. Oh, Addie, she cried, you are on a committee to decide how we shall entertain the seniors. I am? Addie inquired indifferently, but Genevieve Alden gave an angry start, the blood rushing to her forehead. Her recent mood of kindly tolerance seemed as remote as her childhood. She should have realized, she told herself, that by entering into the class activities she would be brought in contact with girls who were worse than nobody, girls it was impossible to know. "'We're going to have a meeting after school,' the chairman rattled on, still addressing Addie. "'And please bring some bright ideas. Genevieve thinks—' "'Excuse me,' Genevieve broke in icily. "'Please leave me out. I'm not going to act on that committee.' The chairman was naturally surprised. She was also annoyed. "'Why, what's the matter?' she cried sharply. "'A minute ago you were saying—' "'I have changed my mind.' Genevieve's manner was nicely calculated to be crushing. Unluckily, the chairman was a girl of India-rubber temperament. What would have subdued and silenced another had no effect upon her. "'Don't be silly, Genevieve. Anybody can't flop around in no time at all without any reason.' My reason is quite satisfactory to myself, thank you. Addie Dwight hung up her hat and coat with forced deliberation. When she turned, there was an ominous glitter in her eyes. Is your reason a secret? Genevieve looked in her direction, with the effect of not seeing anything in particular. It was a look much in favor among the pupils of the select school, where she had spent several years, and was intended to protect the select young person who cultivated it from the advances of the vulgar and presuming. After achieving this freezing stare, Genevieve seemed to forget Addie's existence. "'You really must excuse me,' she said to the chairman, with exaggerated politeness. "'I couldn't think of serving on such a promiscuous committee.' The room was rather full now. New girls were arriving every minute, and those who had removed their wraps were making an excuse to linger, for the most obtuse could not fail to realize that something interesting was about to happen. Addie advanced in Genevieve's direction the silent girls drawing back before her and leaving her path open. "'May I ask if your refusing to serve on that committee has anything to do with my being on it?' Genevieve's flush deepened. She found Addie's bluntness annoying, for, like most girls of her supercilious sort, 
she preferred to rely on indirect methods but since the gauntlet was thrown down she could not ignore it of course she said still addressing the unhappy chairman though she glanced scornfully in addie's direction of course i'm prepared to put up with a great deal in a school like this that every one attends but when it comes to serving on committees with an ordinary nursemaid i must draw the line addie laughed not at all pleasantly i suppose she remarked smilingly that you think your family is so much better than mine even addie's sympathizers in the group felt that this was inviting trouble what does it matter anyway one girl asked but genevieve irritated beyond endurance by something in addie's tone faced her squarely since you ask me she said conscious that anger ruffled her disdainful calm i hardly think there can be much comparison between the daughter of charles alden if only you were really his daughter remarked addie genevieve broke off and stood silent looking at her interrupter every girl in the room caught her breath and then a death-like silence ensued you may have as blue blood as anybody addie continued pleasantly but it would be rather hard to prove it because you see nobody knows who your father and mother were i think you must be crazy genevieve said simply astonishment had swallowed up all other emotions she did not even realize that she was angry oh dear no addie smiled i'm not crazy at all only perhaps i know more about it than you do you were taken from an orphan asylum when you were three months old my father isn't rich she ended in cruel triumph but he is really mine how dare you genevieve burst out the first paralysis of astonishment was past she felt capable of inflicting bodily injury on addie i never heard anything so preposterous she raged my father will see that you are punished for such an outrageous lie then you really didn't know the look addie cast in genevieve's direction was a very good imitation of pitying surprise your old nurse said they didn't want you to know but i thought you surely would have found it out by now what's the blockade for asked a cheerful voice and peggy raymond stood in the doorway priscilla at her elbow but every one was too intent on the singular duel to notice the question much less to reply Genevieve's answer, spoken in a voice high-pitched and hysterical, reached Peggy's astonished ears. "'How dare you say that! My father will have you arrested! Arrested!' "'What's the matter?' Peggy pushed her way forward, and Genevieve, turning, clutched her arm, stammering incoherently as she attempted to explain. Addie's voice broke in incisively. "'I just happened to mention that Genevieve was an adopted child, and it seems that it is news to her.' "'Oh, Addie!' peggy cried there was incredulity in her voice but something else a shocked horror that brought the blood surging to addie's cheeks i shouldn't have spoken of it she said quickly if genevieve hadn't considered me such an awfully ordinary person of course we don't claim to be aristocrats we dwights but at the same time hush addie there was a ring of authority in peggy's tone and addie subsided into a sulky silence meanwhile genevieve was holding peggy fast and repeating over and over it's an outrageous lie my father will have her arrested let's get out of this crowd genevieve said peggy trying to speak in a matter-of-fact fashion but the sympathy in her voice betrayed her genevieve drew back you why you believe her she faltered i didn't suppose anybody could be insane enough to believe such a silly story you only need to ask your father and mother when you go home remarked addie if i'm lying you can easily prove it come genevieve peggy said again she was appalled at Addie's cruelty, for that this stern-faced girl was speaking the truth she did not doubt for an instant. Addie had never been one of Peggy's favorites, but she would not have believed her capable of such ruthlessness. "'Don't say any more,' she begged of Genevieve. "'You can talk it over with your father and mother when you go home.' Peggy did not realize that her sympathy turned Genevieve's frenzy of anger into resistless terror. Genevieve could understand that a girl might take revenge on another by inventing atrocious falsehoods. There was no mystery in the vindictiveness that looked out of Addie's gray eyes, but the pity that sounded in Peggy's voice unnerved her completely. Peggy was plainly indignant at Addie, but Genevieve felt something lacking in that indignation, the contemptuous incredulity that so preposterous a falsehood deserved. And why was she sorry for her? How did she dare to be sorry? Genevieve had meant to stand her ground, disregarding Peggy's appeals to come away. She would force this horrible girl, 
who was no better than a servant, to unsay her words, to apologize for her daring falsehood. But the small room, packed with motionless, silently attentive girls, grew dark all at once. A weight was pressing on her lungs. She could not breathe. "'Help me, Priscilla!' she could hear Peggy's alarmed voice, seemingly coming from a great distance. "'She's going to faint!' With Peggy on one side and Priscilla on the other, Genevieve reached the corridor. The fresh air revived her somewhat, yet in her pallor and tremulousness she was a pitiful object. She was vaguely aware that the girls coming in were asking what ailed her, and that the others were replying in whispers. Why did they whisper? Why accord a lie so monstrous the dignity of concealment? "'Do you feel as if you could walk up to the restroom, Genevieve?' Peggy was saying. "'You can lie down there, you know, and Miss Watts will give you something.' i want to go home genevieve moaned yes of course as soon as we've fixed you in the restroom one of us will go to the office and telephone your mother to send for you i'm sure you won't be able to do any work to-day they helped her up the stairs to the pleasant restroom where several couches and easy chairs were in readiness for girls who were indisposed and the teacher summoned from an adjoining classroom unlocked the closet where a few simple remedies were kept and found what was suited to genevieve's case in a school numbering nearly a thousand pupils it was not uncommon for a girl to faint and miss watts wondered at the tragic solemnity of the two seniors just a little faintness said miss watts with an assurance that her very superficial diagnosis hardly justified she'll be as well as ever after she lies quiet for an hour oh you want to go home very well if you feel that way though i'm sure it is not in the least necessary peggy's recitations that morning were not at all creditable victoria wells twice corrected her blunders in history and blanche estabrook worried but when blanche glanced toward priscilla for sympathy priscilla sat in a gloomy absorption which apparently had nothing to do with peggy's mistakes blanche felt that the lot of a leader in a conspiracy was a hard one it seems as if school were different this year peggy confided to priscilla as they went down to luncheon things keep happening such disagreeable things priscilla answered with a wan smile i suppose it isn't strange exactly things happen in a family where there are only one or two girls and when a thousand girls get together it's bound to be exciting the trouble with you priscilla ended severely is that you shoulder responsibility for everybody in the school well how can i help it if i walk into the cloakroom where a girl is fainting away because somebody has told her something awful i can't just hang up my things and walk off can i Peggy's inquiry was not answered, for at that moment Addie Dwight joined the two friends. Though her manner was a trifle defiant, it did not take any especial insight to perceive that she was ill at ease. I suppose you girls thought I was horrid to take Genevieve down the way I did this morning. If you really want to know what I think, said Peggy with spirit, it seemed to me the most heartless thing I ever heard of. How did you find it out? Priscilla asked. Neither girl was inclined to question the truth of Addie's statements. Whatever her faults, and they were evident enough, the manufacture of malicious falsehoods was not included in the list. Why, there was an old Irish woman who tried to talk to Genevieve on the streetcar one afternoon, and, of course, Genevieve was insulting, as she always is when she thinks that people are beneath her socially. But that time she made a mistake, for the old woman knew more about her than she knew herself. It seems she worked in the Alden family when they adopted a little girl, Mrs. Alden had just lost a baby, and she grieved so that finally they got another of about the same age from an orphan asylum, and that was Genevieve. Peggy sighed. She remembered perfectly the face of the old woman whom Genevieve had snubbed. Genevieve's silly arrogance was directly responsible for her present humiliation, but that did not excuse Addie for her share in the matter. "'I don't see how you could have done it,' Peggy repeated. "'Before all those girls, too. Why, Addie, that's all she has, poor thing.' just her pride in being well-born and looking down on all the rest of us it's enough to kill her to lose it all in a minute she was always trying to insult me addie exclaimed i didn't plan to tell her about it why i've known for months that she was adopted and that all her airs about being better than other people was a joke but when she refused to serve on a committee just because i was on it and said so before a room full of girls i i just had to speak peggy sighed yes i might have known it was that of course, if you get angry enough, you're hardly responsible for what you say. And poor Genevieve can be frightfully provoking. I don't see that there's anything we can do now, she ended. No, Addie answered feebly. It was evident that Peggy took it for granted that she was ready to make amends, if possible, for her indiscreet disclosure, 
and though Peggy was anything but formidable, Addie could not summon the courage to deceive her. As the sophomore went for her bowl of soup, she found herself wondering why revenge was popularly supposed to be sweet. Her own was complete enough to satisfy the most vindictive, but the flavor was bitter on her tongue. End of chapter 12